Now I'm going to take some more of the medium. This is the clear tar gel. Layer it on. Be generous. And we're going to get some paint. Now I'm going to use some different paints here. I'm using the iridescent gold fine. And I'm going to use a iridescent gold deep. And an iridescent bright gold. I'm using a magenta. Now this is, this is in a applicator bottle that you would use for hair dye. Um, I've mixed Cheap Joe's Magenta and Cheap Joe's Portrait Pink in with a medium. Um, I've used matte medium, but it doesn't really matter what medium you use. So I'm going to squirt a little bit on here, just drops. This process gives you a very watery look with fine lines. I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. That's okay if it globs on there a little bit. You don't want a whole lot of paint. A little bit goes a long way. Now this one is. They get skins in them sometimes. So. Well, that one's not coming out. It's being a little stubborn. Just a little bit of paint. So now I'm going to get a clay sculpting tool. So now I've got a clay sculpting tool. Now you can use a nail or a toothpick uh, or a fork. Plastic fork works great. But I'm using this and I'm going to move the paint through the gel. I'm going to do that here. I'm just doing a demonstration, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But you can see how the, the lines just really stay in the gel. When the gel dries, those lines will be sitting on top of the canvas. Now this is another sculpting tool, and I'm, on the bottom part I'm going to show you how it would look if you drug it. Now the gel, even though right now it looks like it's kind of making a mess, the gel will actually level back out. That's why they call it, um, well this isn't the self-leveling, but it, it is a self-leveling gel, which means that it will just go ahead and flatten back out. You can drag part into this. So that's how that process works. And you don't need a lot of color. You can really, really move it through a lot of the area. And that gives you some idea as to how fun that is. Now another thing I wanted to show you was if you take your spoon or your, not your spoon, your um, palette knife. I'm going to get a little bit smaller palette knife. And you take the gel. I'm just going to put a little glob right there. And you take your palette knife and you get a little bit of this 
lighter color. I'm going to use the pink again. You come in here, and you start dragging it out, and it'll make little very thin areas. It really works but a little bit better with a bigger palette knife. This is a little bit smaller canvas than I'm used to working with. And remember the gel is going to dry clear. You can get just a little bit of a thin coating of paint. So when it dries, it'll almost look like a striated cloud or a, it'll look very cloudy, but in a different way than that. And you can just eat, keep adding gel. And you can kind of make one surface go into the other. And there you go. Now this is one that I did with that method. I did it uh, about 24 hours ago. So it's dry now. That's about how long it takes. Depending uh, you know, on your heat and all that. So this is the one where I put the gel down and I dropped the paint into it and drew into it with the clay sculpting tools like I just showed you. This one is where I drug, I mix the gel with a little bit of paint and drug it through. You can see how you get some interesting little areas here. And this is the one where I use the spoon to move the gel, the paint through the gel. So that kind of gives you an idea. This is just a sample board that gives you an idea as to what it will look like when it's dry. So that's it.